Hey everyone, it's Edward from Ideal Direct Home Improvements. In today's video, we're going to show you how we're going to be installing the uncoupling membrane on this plywood floor in this bathroom. Um, we're going to be using the MapGuard UN, and I'm going to show you step by step how we're going to prep the floor and uh, get started installing this and making this waterproof. So stay tuned and enjoy. So I wanted to uh, just give you a few tips and tricks when you're doing a bathroom remodel. Um, see, I just finished cleaning the floor, basically giving it a light wash, and it was fairly easy because what I did is when we started to demolish anything that we had to demolish, um, once I was done the floor, we vacuumed it, cleaned it, and then one of the best things to do to make your life easier is to pick up a roll of builder paper. Believe it or not, if you have to do it two or three times, do it. This will save you a lot on cleanup, especially right now where it's really crucial. And that's it. We just roll it out and we use, uh, you know, any type of box tape, the, the wider one. We tape up the seams, we cover up the plywood so it stays clean throughout the remodel. Trust me, spending the 20 or $30 on the roll of paper will save you a ton of headaches in the long run. So the builder's paper, you know, I put it down right when the plywood, we stripped off all the towel and stuff, and I put it down and then we took down the drywall so you can see the plywood is pretty clean and it was easy to clean because I, I put this down. So then throughout the whole stage of the whole remodel, you know, uh, the drywall installation, even drywall installation, you know, you're going to drop the dust, you're going to drop your sheet, you're going to put it on the floor, it's going to leave, you know, the drywall on the floor and stuff like that. So I didn't have an issue cleaning up so much because I put the builder paper down. Then even when it came to the taping, the builder paper was down on top of the plywood. So it pretty much stayed really clean. When I was done the taping, that was it. I just swept up the dust from the builder's paper and then we primed the whole bathroom. And uh, it's amazing. It's, you know, take the time, put the builder paper down, keep the plywood as clean and as fresh as you can because when it comes to this stage of cleaning up, you're ready to go. You're not going to be, you know, there for hours just cleaning up. So cleaning up the floor is all done and trust me, Use this, it'll save you a ton of headaches. Even after the towel's installed, when I start doing this wall and the shower walls, once the towel's installed and grouted, I'm gonna cover up the towel again, just so I don't have to keep cleaning up because in a bathroom like this, this takes five minutes to put down. The most important thing that we have to do is fasten this floor down properly so we can, you know, uh, try to minimize the deflection of the plywood on the floor so i'm going to be screwing down the whole plywood floor and we're going to be using special inch and three quarter flooring screws number two robertson bit and i'm basically just going to put screws every six to eight inches so we can make sure that this plywood is going to be fastened down properly and i'll just be showing you that in our time lapse. So let's get started with screwing down the plywood floor. Another tip, as I was screwing the floor down, you know, if there were any other screws or nails that were popping up or the head was just above flush the plywood, you know, make sure you sink those. Um, just use a, a hammer and a nail set for the nails and make sure that all the nails and all the screws are, you know, nice and flush. If they're a little bit below, 
That's the key. So we're ready for step three. Floor is screwed down, cleaned up, and ready for step three. Step three is we're going to unpackage this, unroll it, and we're going to pre-cut all the pieces that we need so that measure, cut, fit, and have the whole floor pretty much ready laid out and ready for us to mix mortar. Now, this roll here is three foot three. It's 39 inches, okay? So, in taking a look at this bathroom, the floor is about six feet, like so, okay? And after, with the shower base down, it's about 12 and a half, almost 13 feet, like so. To put one long roll like that, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out so I can put all the pieces in the roll out like so, okay? Going across the shorter span. So I'll probably need one, two, three, four pieces, which is okay, but it'll give me very little waste. So when you're doing it, you know, take a look at the floor where you're going to get the least amount of waste for everything, anything you do. Either it's the uncoupling membrane or tile, whatever it might be. So I'm going to unpackage this and start measuring it out. And we'll take a look. I'll show you in the time lapse to get it all ready. Um, a very important thing that, you know, with any building product, you never want to make a seam line up on a seam. Okay, so this uncoupling membrane, I measured it 39 inches or three foot three. Okay, so I measure it from this wall and I just mark it. Okay, so this is basically the seam of the uncoupling membrane is going to be about three inches away from the plywood seam, the tongue and groove. I don't want that. I want a better overlap and I don't want it to match up so much. So I already pre-measured and my best bet is to start cutting from that side because I'm going to have a much bigger overlap. So I'll just mark it there. So I'm going to have an overlap more or less about a foot. Okay. And uh, minimum you want that. You don't want this to line up on the seam, so that's the best way. Now, if it was still too close, either from that side or from this side, then, you know, cut off a little bit, okay? So that you have minimum, minimum, one foot of overlap on the seam, okay? So I'm gonna get started. We're gonna do time lapse, and it's pretty much just measure, cut, um, I'm going to be using utility knife, a nice sharp one, and my big scissors. And that's it. And this stuff, it cuts nice and easy. Take your time, you know, put one piece, measure, cut it, and keep going. Let's get started. Let's take a look. Okay, so this is the end of my uncoupling membrane. And then from here, 
to the tongue and groove seam. Let's take a look and see what the measurement is. So you see I did a 14 inch overlap which I think is great. That's just perfect. And then it pretty much continues the rest because all the sheets are four foot so it gives an automatic overlap because all these sheets are three foot three and I have that same overlap wherever it ends. Okay so here we are we're all done cutting and fitting the membrane. Take a look. And I used just a straight edge, four foot level square measuring tape. Now the one most important thing that the manufacturer says is to stay quarter inch away from the wall. So keep that in mind when you're measuring and cutting. Okay, quarter inch. And let's take a look here at the door. So I notched it out for the door so that the tile will end up being finishing just under the center of the door. That's cut out. And we're ready to go. It's all dry laid, fitted, cut. Cut around the water closet flange. And that's it. All ready. Ready to go for the next step. Okay, so we're ready for step four. Step four is going to be installing the membrane with the mortar. Now we're going to be using the Ultraflex 2 by Mape. It's a modified polymer mortar and this one uh, is better designed to grab onto the plywood. It has better adhesion. Okay, the map guard, the UM. So you just follow the instructions, read what it says and it'll tell you, you know, exactly the mortar that you need. So the specifications that MapGuard UM is asking for is the ANSI A118.11. And that's exactly what this mortar is. ANSI A118.11. So this is the stuff that we're going to use. It's, like I said, a polymer modified thin set mortar and that's exactly what we're going to use. The tool that we're going to use to install the mortar is going to be our quarter inch by quarter by quarter square notch trowel. That's exactly what the, the manufacturer is recommending. It also says that you can use a V-notch trowel of you know specific size. And I'm going to do basically one section at a time. When I start it, I'm going to be keying it in with the flat side of the trowel so that it can, I can make sure that it's going to uh, have good adhesion and we have mortar on the plywood itself. Once I key that whole section in, then I'm going to flip the trowel to the notch side and I'm going to install the mortar using the notch side. I'm going to keep it all in the same direction. Once I put, I notch all the mortar in and it's ready to install, I'm going to put the sheet on carefully, use my wooden float, and I'm going to just press on it and push it in a little bit, just using the wooden float, like the corners and stuff like that. Once that's ready to go, then I'm going to be using my roller. Now, this is a roller, you can rent it, or you can buy it. We do enough of these jobs. I just sit, bit the bullet and said, you know what? I'm done with, um, you know, using the smaller roller and strapping a bag of mortar on this with bungee cords and stuff like that. So I said, forget it. I just bit the bullet and, and bought it. This is about $200. It's a little pricey, but well worth it. I don't have to strap anything to it all the weights in the roller. So this is very important. If you don't have one of these, make sure you rent it because you're gonna need it. And so basically what happens, once the sheet is installed, I'm gonna use the wooden float like I just said, and then I'm going to roll this a few times. We'll show you in the time lapse. 
and uh, that's pretty much it. It's going to be flat. So once the one sheet is installed, then I'm going to start on the next with keying it in with the flat trowel, quarter inch trowel, and put the sheet on. Use my wooden fold just to spread it, like push the, the membrane against the plywood. And then we're going to use this to roll. Okay, so everything's laid out. I'm ready to go. Have all my tools ready, set, go. I'm just going to mix this, a full bag of mortar. Now, when I mix the full bag of mortar, I'm going to mix the higher recommendation of water because I want it a little bit more wet than our average mortar that we use to install. And that's basically just going on the high end of the table. I'm going to read the instructions. I'm going to follow the instructions put the recommended amount of water to get started right now with mixing the mortar and we're gonna start installing this, get it done. Okay, so mortar's all mixed up. Now, I usually do two sheets at a time, okay? But let's, just for this video, and it's better for you guys to do, just do one section at a time. So that's what we're gonna do so we can show you. I'm gonna do the first one and show you exactly what's going on. And, uh, and that's it, let's get started. I'm just gonna remove it, put it aside. Now, whether for plywood or concrete, if you follow these instructions in this video, you'll be you'll do just fine. Before we put any mortar, either on concrete or plywood, even though it's all cleaned up and stuff, we're just gonna grab our sponge. We're gonna drain all the water out. We don't want it soaked, we just want it wet. And we're gonna give the plywood a good lick. This is going to help with the mortar to stick. Give it a good lick, make it slightly damp. So when I mix the mortar, I guess just to keep it simple for everybody who wants to mix this, I follow the instructions on the back, like I put in the, the proper amount of water, and then just to make it a little bit more wet, I grabbed one of these big full sponges, filled it up with water, put it in when you know I was ready to mix, and that's what I did for the extra water. So it might be a little bit sloppy, actually it's perfect. It's just perfect. Love it. So again, with the flat side of the trowel, I'm going to spread it a little bit, keep it flat. Now right now it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what direction.
Okay, so that's keyed in flat. Now we're gonna do the quarter inch shawl. You're gonna see me spread it around like unevenly, only to work around the pipes and the toilet flange. Um, but at the end, when I'm done and there's enough amount, I'm gonna do nice clean lines. Okay, I'm happy with that. It's ready to go. Grab the sheet. Now, the tricky thing is only going to be around the water pipe. But we'll get this done. Now all I have to do is I'm going to line it up with the sheet that I'm on. Make sure we have our quarter inch gap all the way around. The sheet is centered. We're supposed to go. Wooden fold. And you can see like, well, maybe you can't see, but generally what happens is just from my hand pressing down, you can see the darkness. That's where the cement or the mortar, sorry, is already like stuck a little bit, right? So let's check the coverage. I'm going to peel this corner. What we want to see is the white mesh completely gray. So let's see. Actually, you know what? Let's do a close up, okay? Okay, so you can see the coloring difference. So this is a little bit lighter, that's a little bit darker. Let's peel this up. I didn't even roll it. I just did it with the flow. Let's check the coverage. Okay, so you can see whatever was lighter, we didn't get enough coverage. So I'm just gonna retrowel this here, even before I start rolling it on. Make sure I put more cement. Okay. So we checked and you saw, it was the lighter part where it didn't thing, but I didn't roll it, but uh, it's still in that one area, doesn't have enough cement. So I'm just gonna peel this out. And you see the whole thing is really, really good. 
So I'm just going to put a little bit more water over here. And I got to do this quick. Should be good. The whole sheet pretty much was covered, and you can tell because it turns dark. This corner here, I'm gonna do as much as I can with the fold because I can't get the roller in there. And then I'll step on it just in that little corner. I'm just going to avoid the excess cement off. I don't know why, but every washroom that I do, it's always so hot on the hottest days. Now we're going to get the roller out and roll this really well. This thing's heavy, it's a beast. So I'll roll it for a couple of minutes. Do it one way and then I'll change directions. Okay, so I showed you pretty much in depth how to do it. Now we're just going to do the rest time lapse. Okay. The uncoupling membranes all installed, everything is dried up and uh, we're at our last stage for waterproofing and it's very easy. It's, we're going to use the Aqua Defense again, we're going to use the fabric seam tape again from a pay and that's it. I already cut three of them and they're ready to go and we're going to just coat this put the tape on, coat over it, and let it dry, put the last coat tomorrow, and then we're ready to install tiles. So let's get started. This is the last stage. I'm just gonna use a little roller. Let's take a look at the coverage and you're going to see how this already, so it sticks right through, you see? So you put the first coat on, or a coat, on the uncoupling membrane and then you roll it back on and that's it. 
your seams are waterproofed. So I'm just going to do the other two that I have left. And we're done. This thing, when it's dry, it'll be all ready for towel installation. Well, there you have it, folks. This floor and this uncoupling membrane is all installed and we did a start to finish. I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out our other videos. Don't forget to like, thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, don't be afraid to leave some comments. I'm pretty good with responding and just enjoy our channel. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.